said 190 people a day overdose and die every single day in the United States of America. That is about a 737 plane. That's what about a 737 aircraft can carry. Could you imagine the national media attention it would get if they were reporting that a plane was crashing every single day and killing 190 people? So Jelly Roll is breaking more glass ceilings, y'all. This dude is absolutely amazing. I've been following this cat for like eight years. Since he was very, very small and no one knew who he was, I was telling everyone that this guy was going to be the next thing. And now he is talking to Congress about the fentanyl epidemic going on in the country, killing people. So let's watch everything that he said to Congress, and then I'm going to talk about it a little bit, man. I respect this dude. I'm such a fan of this dude. Um, if you're not, please stick around and listen to what he has to say. Used to having a rock and roll band behind me when I have a microphone in front of me. Um, during the time that I've been given to share my testimony here, I think it's important to note before I start that in these five minutes I'll be speaking that somebody in the United States will die of a drug overdose. And it is almost a 72 percent chance that during those five minutes it will be fentanyl related. Having started that way, Chairman Brown, Ranking Member Scott, and esteemed committee members, thank you for having me. I know this is a bit of a curveball, but I like a little baseball myself. My name is Jason D. Ford, but to most I am known as Jelly Roll. I, it is important to establish earlier that I am a musician and that I have no political alliance. I am neither Democrat nor Republican. In fact, because of my past, my right to vote has been restricted. Thus far, I have never paid attention to a political race in my life. Ironically, I think that makes me the perfect person to speak about this because fentanyl transcends partisanship and ideology, gentlemen and women. This is a totally different problem. And uh, I was speaking outside to the media and I, I gave them a statistic that said 190 people a day overdose and die every single day in the United States of America. That is about a 737 plane. That's what about a 737 aircraft can carry. Could you imagine? the national media attention it would get if they were reporting that a plane was crashing every single day and killing 190 people. But because it's 190 drug addicts, we don't feel that way because America has been known to bully and shame drug addicts instead of dealing and trying to understand what the actual root of the problem is with that. But the sad news is that that narrative is changing too because the statistics say that in all likelihood almost every person in this room has lost a friend family member or colleague to the disease known as addiction i've attended more funerals than i care to share with y'all this committee i could sit here and cry for days about the caskets i've carried of people i love dearly deeply in my soul good people not just drug addicts, uncles, friends, cousins, normal people, some people that just got in a car wreck and started taking a pain pill to manage it. One thing led to the other. And how fast it spirals out of control, I don't think people truly, truly understand. So many people. Equally, I think it's important for me to tell y'all that I'm not here to defend the use of illegal drugs. And I also understand the paradox of my history as a drug dealer standing in front of this committee. But equally, I think that's what makes me perfect to talk about this. I was a part of the problem. I am here now standing as a man that wants to be a part of the solution. I brought my community down. I hurt people. I was the uneducated man in the kitchen playing chemists with drugs I knew absolutely nothing about, just like these drug dealers are doing right now when they're mixing every drug on the market with fentanyl, and they're killing the people we love. I'll be honest with y'all. My desire is to only get older and only do better and be better. I believed when I sold drugs genuinely that selling drugs was a victimless crime. I truly believe that, y'all. My father always told me, what doesn't get you in the wash will get you in the rinse. Now I have a 15-year-old daughter whose mother is a drug addict. Every day I get to look in the eyes of a victim in my household of the effects of drugs. Every single day. And every single day I have to wonder, if me and my wife, if today will be the day that I have to tell my daughter that her mother became a part of the national statistic. History repeats itself, gentlemen. Even in the 1990s, crack cocaine had long made its way into my middle lower class neighborhood. 
And at that moment, even as a teenager, you could have never convinced me in that moment that there would be a far bigger problem on the horizon in the form of a pharmaceutical drug. And then I watched opioids and Oxycontin burst onto the scene. I'm here to tell y'all that fentanyl is going to make the Sackler family look like saints. And I want to let y'all sit with that for a second. It is time for us to be proactive and not reactive. We were reactive with crack, we were reactive with opioids, and y'all are taking the first step at somebody in Senate finally being proactive. I truly believe in my heart that this bill, that this bill will stop the supply and can't help stop the supply of fentanyl. But in part of being proactive, gentlemen and, and women I, and, and ladies, I have to be frank and tell y'all that if we don't talk to the other side of Capitol Hill and stop the demand, we are gonna spin our tires in the mud. Y'all are taking the first step, but I encourage you to take it outside of this room and you take it to your colleagues and your constituents and you give them the most that you can. I know I've got a few seconds here and Senator Brown said I may or may not go over. Um, all I want to say is that I not only encourage y'all to do this, I encourage y'all to take it a step further. At every concert I perform, I witness the heartbreaking impact of fentanyl. I see fans grappling with this tragedy in the form of music that they seek solace in music and hope that their experiences won't befall others. They crave reassurance. These are the people I'm here to speak for, y'all. These people crave reassurance that their elected officials actually care more about human life than they do about ideology and partisanship. I stand here as a regular member of society. I am a stupid songwriter, y'all, but I have firsthand witnessed this in a way most people have not. I encourage y'all to not only pass this bill, but I encourage you to bring it up where it matters at the kitchen table. Such a humble dude, man, and so well prepared. Like, I feel like he read this many, many times and his his preparation definitely paid off because he came across the way he always comes off, as genuine, as real, as he really is trying to be part of the solution, man. And I totally respect that in so many ways, man, to to see the music scene that most look up to now, um, you know, big cars and big chains and big booties or whatever, dude. And then to see this guy that that used to do that because I followed him when he did that. And now he has done so much more and is doing so much more. He gave up $250,000 to the local jail that he did time in in order to build a studio. Like, maybe not everybody wants to rap, but the fact that he's going in there and giving them kids an option to do something else and telling them, yo, you can be better than this. I used to sit right here and look at me now. Dude, I just respect that so much. I had to make a video on this as soon as I seen this. Um, I've been telling people about Jelly Roll for years. And, uh, this past year was the first year he came to Virginia for a show. And, like, I know so many people that went. There was so many around there. 23,000 people was at that show at Jiffy Lube Live. And it was amazing. The, the power of his songs, the, the people crying in the, in the, it's amazing. It really is. Best show I've ever been to in my life, hands down. And the fact that he's doing things like this for people like me. You know what I'm saying? He talked about the Sackler family, bro. Those are the same people that put out Oxycontin and that never did a single day in jail. Like, they made millions and millions and millions of dollars and still are and never did a day in jail, you know? And, and to see this, this, this tattooed-faced rapper that I've been following for at least eight years um, go to this level and be able to have an effect on our world in a positive way is such a pleasant uh, change of pace for everything that's going on in the world, right? Um, I'm not Republican or Democrat, he says. He just wants to help people, bro. He don't care about that partisan left, right, black, white, man. He don't care about none of that. And I respect that even more, too, because... One thing about it, drug addiction and fentanyl does not discriminate. It doesn't care if you're white, black, boy, girl, small, tall, fat, skinny. It doesn't care, bro. And I just had to drop something, man, and, and, and put my respect out there. And by chance, any of you don't follow Jelly, but you follow me, dude, you have to check this guy out. You have to. Um, and either way, man, I just want to let y'all know, too, uh, I've been shooting podcasts. I've got two in the editor right now. I'm not going to produce anything until I can put out two weeks worth of content at the same time. But when you see that first video come out, you'll, you'll know by that video what the next two weeks is going to hold. Um, 
I'm working on all that, and I'll have that together soon. It's all addiction-based podcasting with people who have changed their life, um, similar to Jelly, but not to the same level. Um, so I hope you all enjoy that, man. It's real talk with real people. Um, and I think it's important too, man. That's why I thought this was important as well, because uh, same as Jason here, or, you know, Mr. Jelly Roll, uh, I've been to too many funerals, man, for people like this. And, and I'm watching other friends of mine go through the same shit. And uh, it's not fun. It's not cool. Um, I'd like to be part of the solution as well. So just wanted to drop this and let y'all know what it is, man. Uh, like, subscribe, and share, man. I, I would appreciate it. Help me get this content out there to other people. See ya.